Hey there, everybody. How's it going today? Ian back here with you with Stubbo's Media Outlet. Um, okay, so last week I did a review of the new Dream Theater album, A View from the Top of the World. And today I'm going to be ranking all their studio albums, all 15 of them for you guys. So uh, Dream Theater is one of my all-time favorite bands. I got into them uh, probably about uh, 10 years ago. When, um, maybe nine years ago, I forget, somewhere around there, when I had a uh, Sirius XM subscription, and I was listening to a lot of the uh, Aussie's Boneyard station, and um, Dream Theater's uh, Pull Me Under kept coming on, and I loved the album cover, and I, I, I'm like, what is this song? I've never heard of this group before, and I just like, and I was a, I was a prog fan anyway, so, you know, just like prog rock and metal, just like all combined with brilliant musicianship and great song structure, I mean, what's not to love about these guys? So I'm, I'm going to do a quick... Uh, just run down of from bottom to top for you of my ranking of their albums. Some of these are hard to rank. So, at the bottom, I'm going to go with their debut album, 1989's When Dream and Day Unite. This is a very interesting album for the band. Um, of course, the, the three core members of Dream Theater at the time, uh, the, the three founders, John Petrucci on guitar, John Mayung on bass, and Mike Portnoy on the drums, uh, who all met at Berkeley College of Music, uh, formed the band. And along with um, mutual friend Kevin Moore on keyboards, and the, the singer for this album was, was a guy named Charlie Dominici. Uh, very interesting singer for the band, very kind of like kind of like an 80s rock guy, um, kind of Queensryche-ish. Um, some good songs on this album, the, the instrumental uh, you, Yatizi Jam is on here, which is actually the word Majesty spelled backwards because that was the band's original name. Uh, Light Fuse and Get Away is really good. Probably Fortunate and Lies. A Fortune and Lies is probably my favorite on that album. Can't remember much off of it, but um, it's just kind of a different album for the band. It's definitely a debut, but really pointed to what that they were going to do later on. Um, but it's not an album I come back to a lot. So Next up is The, the Astonishing. from, uh, let's say, 2016, uh, 2017. Um, this is the only time I've seen the band live is on the Astonishing Tour, just because I wanted to meet them so bad. Uh, uh, Petrucci is my favorite guitar player. It was so awesome meeting him. All the guys were really nice. Um, they did the Astonishing from uh, start to finish, and it's a concept album. It's like a play. It's uh, two discs, very long, very dense. Um, I just don't come back to it a lot. It's really polarizing to Dream Theater fans. Either they like it or they don't. Uh, Moment of Betrayal is good on there. The Gift of Music is really good. Um, Our New World, I think it's called. There's some small tracks in there that kind of bridge the gap between the songs in terms of what the storyline is. I just don't listen to it a lot. I just don't come back to it. It's, it's just not something I enjoy. Um, so, Next up on the list is Systematic Chaos from 2005, I believe. Uh, Systematic Chaos is very, um, kind of almost thrashy, a little bit like Metallica, but still, I mean, they, they retain their roots of their songwriting. I mean, The Dark Eternal Night is an amazing song. What a great instrumental section that has. Uh, In the Presence of Enemies, Part 1 and 2, the bookends on the album are good. Uh, Prophets of War, I think it's called, is good on there. That's another album I don't come back to. Uh, Constant Motion is really good on there, though, too. Uh, Falling Into Infinity. There's an album, 1997. Uh, record company was trying to make the band more um, um, accessible, and the band just did did not want to do that. But there are still some great songs on the on this album. The first and the last song again, the two bookends, as I said before, New, New Millennium. Always like like that song. Uh, the live at Budokan live version is really good. Um, and of course, the last song, uh, Trial of Tears. Gosh, I love Trial of Tears. What a great song. Man, John Mayung wrote the lyrics. What a great song. The atmosphere in the beginning of that song, it's just like it builds and builds and builds. And it, Mike, Mike Portnoy's got this really cool drum beat. And Labrie's vocals just soar in that song. And Petrucci has this killer guitar solo. Uh, Burning My Soul is good. Um, there's a couple of other good ones on there. I don't remember a lot of that album. That's probably one I need to revisit, but I don't come back to it a lot, so... Um, next is Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. This 
is an album that's pretty high, high on a lot of people's lists, not mine per se. Um, it's it's a double album, and the whole second disc is like a 40 minute, one big long song, but it's kind of broken up into a lot of little songs like uh, Goodnight Kiss, uh, the, test, the Test That Stumped Them All is really like fast. Um, the first disc is more of kind of a normal album with The Glass Prison, great song. Um, the Great Debate is a great song. Uh, Misunder Misunderstood's really good. There, there's some good songs on there. And there's some good songs mixed into the last disc. I just don't... I don't find myself, again, kind of what I said before, coming back to this one a lot. Just, um, but there's some good stuff on there, definitely. So I'd check it out. Uh, next is the self-titled Dream Theater album from, I, I believe, 2013. The second with their replacement drummer, Mike Mangini. Who came in in 2009, I believe. Um, this is a really good album. A lot of people, they just don't, they always put this near the bottom, and I'm putting it up a, a little a little more near the top than other people would. Just some really good, solid songs. The Enemy Inside, uh, The Looking Glass, Behind the Veil is really good, um, along for the rides, a good ballad, and Illumination Theory. At the end, another one of their big, long, 20-minute epics. Really good song. Really good stuff on here. It just There are other ones they've done with Mike Mangini that I like better. Uh, next is Black Clouds and Silver Linings. I really like Black Clouds and Silver Linings. Short album, six tracks, I think. But I mean, when you start off with A Nightmare to Remember, I mean, come on. That's a great song. Um... And you end with The Count of Tuscany. Gosh, I love The Count of Tuscany. What a great song. This, that whole song is structured. It's so cool. Uh, the Best of Times on that album is probably my least favorite. And The Shattered Fortress on there is really good, too. I love The Shattered Fortress. That's part of like the suite they were doing about Mike Portnoy's um, alcoholism. He was like talking about it in his lyrics throughout several songs on several albums. I forget what it's called. It's the Something Sweet. Let me know down the bottom. Um, next up is a dramatic uh, turn of events from here on out. I see from Black Clouds and Silver Linings on out. It's some just great albums for me. Uh, a dramatic tr uh, turn of events, 2009. Uh, first album with Mike Mangini on drums. Really like this album. Really like this album a lot. Um, on, on, on the Backs of Angels is one of my favorites. It really is. Uh, that's the opening track. Uh, Build Me Up, Break, Break Me Down is on there. Lost, Not Forgotten. Bridges in the Sky. And Breaking All Illusions. I mean, come on, Breaking All Illusions. What a great song. Great stuff. Man, my goodness. Um, I love it for my turn of events. Great album. Uh, Distance Over Time. I might switch these two another day. I like Distance Over Time a lot. It's the second to last album that, that they did. Um, definitely, uh, it, it returned to form after a lot of people just did not like, like The Astonishing. Uh, Distance Over Time is definitely back to what Dream Theater should be doing. Uh, every, every song is less than 10 minutes, which for Dream Theater is short. But you got Untethered Angel to kick off that album. Killer song. Um, uh, Into the Light, Paralyzed, uh, At Wit's End, Signal to Noise. Awesome John Mayung bass riff throughout that album. Awesome. I play bass, so that's just killer. Killer stuff. And Pale Blue Dot, the last album I would play Pale Blue Dot, what a cool song. Um, next is Octavarium. I love Octavarium. Oh my gosh, they're so hard to rank for from here on up. Um, uh, I'm surprised that Octavarium is this low. Uh, Root of All Evil, another one of those sweet songs I told you about. I love Root of All Evil. I, um, I Walk Beside You, I think it's called. I, I believe that's the title. I, I'm drawing a blank. These Walls, I love these walls. Um... Uh, the title track, Octavarium, and another one of these long songs, but a great song. Sacrifice Sons about 9-11. Hard lyrics to sing or listen to, but what an instrumental section in the middle. My goodness, those guys knocked that out of the park. Um, man, that whole album is just, it's just there's some great s stuff. Um, uh, I think the answer lies within is on that one. Octavarium. Oh, I need to listen to Octavarium again. Next, um, in my top five is their newest album, A View for the Top of the World. I couldn't believe this made my top five, but I love this new album they did. just came out like a month ago. 
the alien, my god, that punches you in the face and just kicks you, it kicks you in the face, it punches you in the face. I mean, right from the beginning, that song just takes off. And then you got Answering the Call, which that, that song's been on repeat for me for a week. Invisible Monster, a a Answer the Mass, uh, um, Awaken the Master, forgot the title, Awaken the Master, Dark, Doomy, Heavy. Sleeping Giant, Classic Dream Theater, 10 Minutes, and A View from the Top of the World, maybe one of my favorite 20-minute songs they've ever done. Probably one of the most accessible. I'm loving A View from the Top of the World, guys. I'm loving this new album. Number four is Awake. I love Awake. Third album they did. Six o'clock on a Christmas morning. If you know it, you love it. Caught in a Web, Erotomania, Great Instrumental, Innocence Faded. Oh my gosh. Come on with that song. That song's hard to sing, too. Scarred. I mean, come on, Scarred is an amazing song. Ends with uh, Space Dive Vest, really interesting song written by uh, Kevin Moore, their keyboard player, which, which was his last album. Wow. Awake. Great album. Heavy, too. Lie. Lie was a music video, or had a music video with it. Going kind of fast now, but Train of Thought. Gosh, I love Train of Thought. Oh my gosh. Train of Thought, heavy album. Just They went to go metal, they went metal. As I Am, my favorite Dream Theater song is on Train of Thought. The last song, In the Name of God. Love In the Name of God. Love that song. Listen to In the Name of God. If you've never heard it, after this video, listen to it. Honor Thy Father, Endless Sacrifice, This Dying Soul. Thank you, Dream Theater, for Train of Thought. Brilliant album. Love it. Love that album. Number two, one of the best concept albums ever, Metropolis Part Two. Scenes from a Memory. Great album. G guys, hypnotized at the beginning, goes through a whole journey, goes through like a murder, and finds this girl, and... A whole bunch of stuff happens on that album, but you got the best instrumental they've, they've ever done, and Dream, Dream Theater themselves said the most key changes of any song, Dance of Eternity. What an amazing song. You want to hear just a complicated piece of music to the nth degree? Listen to Dance of Eternity, people. You got Home on there. You got um, Strange Deja Vu. You got Beyond This Life. I love Beyond This Life. You got Through Her Eyes, which is beautiful. You got The Spirit Carries On. Classic Dream Theater, Spirit Carries On. Great song. Love Metropolis Part 2. Absolutely one of the best concept albums you will ever hear. Check it out. They just came out with the Live in London from 2019 where they did the whole thing in its entirety. It's awesome. Number one, Images and Words. Why, why Images and Words? I love Images and Words. I don't know if they've done better than it, but it's still my favorite. It's a lot of people's favorite, but for a reason. You got Pull Me Under on there. Metropolis Part 1, one of the best songs they've ever done. Learning to Live, underrated Learning to Live, Under a Glass Moon, Surrounded in Another Day. What a killer song list. Come on, guys. Fantastic. And yeah, Pull Me Under is kind of overplayed, but it's really not. It's eight and a half minutes. I still love Pull Me Under. They don't always do it in concert, which I think is cool. It's like their biggest hit, but they've never really had a big hit. I think their greatest hits album is called like uh, Greatest Hit in Other Songs or something like that. But I, I went through this kind of fast, but here's my uh, comprehensive list. If you guys want to pause it, so absolutely, if you're watching this video, here's what I want you to do. I want you to comment down below with your Dream Theater ranking those studio albums. Let me know your ranking. I'd love to hear from you guys. If it's different from mine, I hope it is. My list isn't the, the definitive one. Let me know, guys. I'd love to hear from you. Like, comment, subscribe to my page, Stumbo's Media Outlet. Ring that bell for notifications so you guys know, know when I post new videos. Dream Theater fans, put your list down below in those comments. I want to hear from you. Okay? Okay. That's all I got for this Ranking the Albums video of Dream Theater. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.